Hi, it's uh, Paul Beckwith. It's uh, March 6, uh, 2015, and uh, I'm talking about the climate system. This is part two of the um, videos, um, so please have a look at part one first. So to recap, the uh, sea ice um, thickness um, has been dropping over time, but there was a very rapid drop, you know, 2009, 2010, 2011. Um, there was also um, a sharp drop in the meridional Atlantic um, meridional overturning circulation, so the Gulf Stream moving up north, a sharp decline, and then a spike down. Um, this is a zero mark. If you believe this data, it actually reversed direction. Um, this caused water to pile up on the eastern coast um, of the U.S., um, leading to five uh, inches, actually greater than five inches, 128 millimeters of sea level rise there, which lasted for several years, 2009-2010. Unprecedented um, when combined with uh, king tides or you know storm surges from storms, it caused uh, frequent flooding on the east coast. Um, so. Um, what I want to show now, what I want to talk about now is I want to talk a little bit about the um, sea ice changes that we've been seeing. Um, so what's shown here is the uh, a top view of the Arctic and it's showing the sea ice. Um, this is the date here. Um, so it's showing it from a full year, um, from, from now going back a year. Um, so you can see that it's, it's, uh, this is this year, so it's building up. This is where it is now. Um, and then it jumps. Okay, so this is a year ago. So it was a lot thicker here. This is five meter thick ridged ice. Not much multi-year ice. It's mostly young ice that's ridged up. And you can see, um, that, um, you know, as, as we proceed through the summer of last year, the ice is decreasing um, in thickness and uh, reaches a minimum around the September or mid-September mark. Um, and this is what we look like what we looked like in the minimum. And then it starts growing um, last you know last fall. Uh, but you can see the whole the key things to note are throughout the entire process, there's a lot of export out here through the Fram Strait of ice. There's a lot of export out through the Nair Strait here. And in fact, the ice bridge that normally forms in the winter, which blocks up the Nair Strait, um, it formed and then it broke up a few days later this year. So exports continue to be very high of ice there. And also on the Bering Strait, um, there's been very little ice out here, which there normally would be a lot more. And often the ice is is go, being exported even in the winter so we're getting um, definitely different patterns occurring so this again is the low um, in the uh, in last summer and this is the growth of the ice through the winter um, we'll just watch it so the key thing is yes so so this is December so now we're into 2015 and you can see that the ice is nowhere near as thick as it was last year. And there's lots of this export on a continuous basis uh, coming out. Now, um, I want to show you, go over this screen here and show you a couple things. Uh, first of all, the Arctic sea ice graphs. So this is what's happening um, with the sea ice extent at the moment. Um, so normally um, about mid-March you reach the, um, you know, early to mid-March you reach the maximum. So this is the 81 to 2010 average. This is two standard deviations, higher, lower. This is a very, a year where there was extensive ice melt 2011 to 2012. And then of course in the summer of 2012, there was a minimum, record minimum. And this is where we're tracking right now. So it looks like it's too early to tell for sure. There's kinks in this curve variations, but you know, how, if we've peaked here and it continues to drop, uh, we could be heading to a, a record low year. 
and eventually one of these record low years because of the weakened state of the ice will lead to a blue ocean event uh, which we define as less than a million um, square kilometers of uh, sea ice. Um, and so the sea ice is rapidly going, the snow covers in spring is also rapidly going, the Arctic is getting darker, we've seen a drop of about 4% in albedo from, from that's, that's uh, well, from 52% average albedo of the Arctic um, in uh, the 80s to, you know, 30 years later or so, down to 48%, so a drop of you know, a drop of four percentage points um, in the albedo. The Arctic's definitely getting darker. It's not just the sea ice decline, it's with covering less area, it's the sea ice uh, thickness is dropping, so there's more penetration of light through the ice. It's also the snow cover decline, there's more dark uh, ground exposed, and uh, so all of the all of these factors also Greenland is darkening and the melt ponds on Greenland uh, lower the reflectivity significantly so this is this is another um, another issue um, let me get the camera a bit better okay so so the sea ice is 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 in trouble um, this is um, what's happening in um, Antarctica so the reason um, I want to show this is because um, the because there's less heat um, moving northward because the Arctic is warming from huge Arctic amplification. There's more heat moving southward, and this heat is getting down to Australia, but it sets up a strong temperature gradient uh, between around Australia, just south of Australia, and Antarctica. So this increases the speed of the jet streams there, and the Coriolis force pulls the ice to, is to the left in the southern hemisphere, so it pulls the ice away from the continent. Also, we know that the continent is losing ice mass from the GRACE anomaly satellites, so that melt is creating the fresh water which is on the surface, and it can freeze at a higher temperature. It freezes at, at zero degrees Celsius as opposed to minus 1.8 for seawater. So that's another reason why the ice is, is, is uh, growing there. Now if you look at the um, if you look at the jet streams um, you can see this sort of pattern here in the southern hemisphere. Um, so even in the southern hemisphere um, it's quite, um, there's, there's a lot of waviness and if you, you know, look up to the northern hemisphere, um, you can see the, um, you can see the jet streams are, you know, you can't even, can you call them jet streams really anymore? I mean, they're just chunks of fast moving air going off in all different directions. You know, there's no rhyme or reason. Um, they should tighten up in the uh, winter. The so-called Arctic Oscillation, which measures the speed of the polar vortex, is, is at extremely high levels. That should make the jet streams close up and become more compact. You know, they're certainly not doing this. And as a result, um, you know, this is an enormous feedback. It's an enormous feedback to warm the Arctic because a lot of warm air is coming up into the Arctic. A lot of cold air is moving south. Both of those processes have the same net effect to increase the Arctic amplification. You know, this is an enormous feedback, uh, you know, not to mention uh, elevated uh, methane levels in the Arctic. Um, in fact, if you look at, go to that um, temperature map on the surface again, um, you can see that, uh, you know, these regions up here, um, you know, this is the uh, region um, where, you know, in the Yamal Peninsula region where we're getting these um, large methane blowholes. So um, the methane, it must be methane hydrates under the ground. What they're doing is they're thawing, you know, when uh, hyd the methane hydrate thaws, it expands about 180, 190 times in volume. So this creates tremendous gas pressure and it's pushing up the the earth into these little hummocks, you know, or pingo type things. And then these things are blowing and villagers, local villagers and so on, are seeing, you know, fireballs in the distance. So, 
you know, I'm not sure whether there's a spark or, you know, the methane is self-igniting, but the concentrations are, you know, extremely high and, uh, you know, it's very, very explosive. Um, and we're getting more and more of these um, bursts. Um, so there's all of these factors coming into play. Um, this just shows you how messed up the, um, this is temperature anomalies. You know, look at these tremendous, this is 20 degrees Celsius uh, departure from average. This is minus 20 degrees. You know, um, this is getting very normal sort of situations now. There it is in the, a different view. And there it is, uh, you know, another view, and you can see cold area. So here we have, uh, you know, minus 20, you know, minus 20, and then plus 20, huge, huge um, temperature um, imbalances. Similar things here, you know, in Antarctica, similar things in Australia, you know, weather extremes. Um, and then sea surface temperatures here. Um, so you can see the different views and you can see um, this is at the warm temperatures uh, for, for, for the El, El Nino and then sea surface temperature anomalies. Um, you can see some areas here, there must be no ice there, you know, around Australia. I mean, this, this is not a climate, this is not a healthy climate system that we're used to. Uh, I gotta, you know, no hiding it. I mean, this is really, bizarre stuff that's happening as the entire uh, climate on the planet uh, redistributes through our abrupt climate change. Um, so I think I'll stop uh, now and uh, hopefully I've managed to explain some of the science uh, to you of what's happening right now on our planet. Thank you.